Hey guys, this is HD. Welcome back to another 2 vs. 2 show match. Same players as before. It is going to be Jinro and TLO representing Team Liquid versus Artosis and QXC. Both of them pretty good friends. Of course, QXC opting to play Protoss for this 2 vs. 2 series. And one more thing, make sure to check out check out Tagalicious, which is the same product that is produced by the sponsor for iRip. And so make sure to check that out. It will be in the link down below. See if it's a program you can use. They did sponsor this show match. The winner of this 2v2 does take home some money. And with that, Husky, what do you think we're going to see on this map as actually it's Twilight Fortress? Now, I, I need to double check really quick. Okay, so yeah, they are Terran Terran again. And so they are going to be Terran Protoss. Now, I was talking to the players about this, and I think TLO is going to start choosing Protoss for the rest of the games. He asked us if it was okay if he if he chose Protoss instead of playing random. And so they may have some sort of strategy revolving around that. I'm kind of curious to see because from what I've seen, the Liquid One's weakest matchup is actually Protoss and he's choosing Protoss. So I don't know what's going to happen. That would be pretty interesting. Yep, he is going to be choosing Protoss. It is going to be Protoss Terran versus Zerg Protoss, seemingly for the rest of the series. So the nice thing is we are going to have a at least one of each race in the rest of the games. Keep in mind, this is the second game. The previous game, I think uh, QXC and Artosis actually lost the first game. And so the series currently won up for Team Liquid as both players securing that front door on Twilight Fortress going to allow them to block off that entrance. It is good. The one thing I always hate when I'm playing 2v2, it's just annoying to get a Zerg ally on this map because you can't actually wall in. The Zerg player just kind of sits back and does their own thing. They obviously <laughs> can't help with the wall in. So I don't, I don't think it'll play a huge role, but it can if they do a really early timing attack against you. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to see an early timing attack from QXC and Artosis, both of them seemingly going for macro. It looks like this game, Artosis really macroing hardcore. Look at that, getting that uh, spawning pool, I believe, at 15 and now just pumping straight up drones. He hasn't gotten a fast expansion yet, going to be getting gas, so we're probably going to see some one base play. Might try to get some speedlings in, but there's just no way they're going to be able to break down this front door that the little one and Artosis and, and Jinro are currently erecting. I think it would very be very wise here for Artosis to grab a hatchery. Well, number one, he has like 500 minerals, unless my eyes are deceiving me. So, I mean, you have to save some for the queen, and then now his drone's going up to right there. So this map, you can actually do a lot of really specific builds for Zerg players. And, uh, yeah, he is going to go ahead and get that fast expand. I think that's a good choice. I think he was out of his comfort zone in game one with his little bit of... I mean, his macro wasn't the best, because I don't know what he was doing. He's pumping Zerglings the whole time. So I think he's going to spice it up a little bit and go for a more drone-heavy build here, which is very, very strong on this map because of the rush distances, plus your allies there to protect you. Yeah, with your ally there to protect you, especially if he's a Protoss player, he's going to be able to hold off pretty much any kind of attack, I think, considering that the opponents, Liquid TLO and Jinro, have decided to wall off, so there's not going to be any pressure anyways. Artosis, meanwhile, can just expand at will. This map is kind of nice if you like to fast expand because, hey, you're not going to get attacked because it's inside your base. So Artosis is going to be able to expand at will, going to be able to drone up as much as he would like, and there's really nothing that the little one and uh, Jinro going to be able to do it about it. I actually think that both both teams are probably going to macro up and we're probably going to see some kind of long-term macro game. Although, hey, this is kind of weird. Jinro is grabbing both the expansions. Uh, what do you think this is all about, Husky? I think what they're going to do here, and I've seen this before, this could also explain why, why TLO chose Protoss, is basically the Terran players, we all know they get mules, and basically I think what Jinro's doing is he's double expanding inside the main. He's going to shovel all of his money right into the mouth of the little one. The little one going to throw down a ridiculous amount of gateways, and they'll probably try and push out once the little one gets 200-200 army. Basically, it's just going to be one army fed and backed by Jinro. So that's my guess. I don't know what else, why you would double expand like this. So the macro provided by Jinro and the micro from the little one. The little one's just going to get extra income and he's going to be able to produce mass out of his warp gates. I really like that strategy. It's almost kind of exploiting the fact that you can send money over in a 2v2. And the really nasty thing about it is Artosis and, and QXC have no idea this is coming. I mean, they see three gateways if you look at their vision. But they have no idea that both of these expansions are currently being controlled by uh, Jinro, so wow, they might actually get caught off guard when the little one pushes out with, his, with a massive army.
There is an Overlord on the right side. Looks like he's going to just barely see the working probes there. You can tell by the anime, or the SCVs rather. You can tell by the animation. And he's just catching a glimpse of that, and he sees the mule. But there's no Overlord in sight on the left side to spot that expansion. And like we were saying, mass mules allow the Terran to just macro like crazy. And so if you look at the unit counting station, the Terran player has 30 SCVs, 3 mules, and 4 marines. So he's obviously feeding that money to TLO right now. On top of that, if you take a look at the income tab, he has double the income of any other player in the game right now. He was at 1,500 a second ago, right now just touching 1,500 again. And look at all these gateways that the little one is throwing down. He's throwing down several gateways, like seven gateways. Forge plus one weapons is taken away right now. And wow, he's just going to have a massive army. I'm not quite sure. Artos is going to be able to do anything about that. He tried to get a scout in right there. Didn't really see much. And the impending attack is coming. I think it's so funny what Jinro is doing. It's, it's just phenomenal. And since they have that wall in, they can't get in there to scout. Now, Artosis did run a bunch of units up into the entrance. He saw there was a lot of Protoss, but he still doesn't know what's in that huge open area between the two Terran bases. And so they're going to have quite the shocker here. And it looks like Artosis is continuing to macro. He, uh -oh. He's still producing drones. So this could be very bad once they push out. Yeah, if you're just producing drones right now as a Zerg player, I mean, that's fine. But you, you typically you have enough reaction time to deal with an, uh, an attacking army from the enemy team. Especially since it's Twilight Fortress, very huge map, which takes a long, di long time to walk across. But Artosis is going to be very surprised when he sees this army pushing out. Now it is beginning to move its way across the map. And the enemy team definitely knows that this is coming. Look at how many Zealots and Stalkers and Sentry this is. Nine minutes into the game, this is absolutely insane. Okay, it's going to be up to Artosis to make something happen. He has way too many drones. Everything he has is a drone right now. And he has, it looks like Corruptors on, the, he has Mutalis. So I'm not sure, he has Corruptors on the way. And Corruptors aren't what you need right now, especially since his Hive, uh, it, he's not going to have them in time. So this could be really bad. Here comes the push. I think he was trying to get some Broodlords, just not going to be enough in time though as the little one now revealing his hand and finally revealing his strategy. I think QXE and Artosis probably are scratching their head like what the heck is going on? This is a massive Protoss army and these Corruptors not going to be able to do anything. QXE trying to micro for desperation's sake but it's just not going to happen. The little one has so many forces and look at that. He's place a proxy pylon down to warp in more units. This is like some kind of a 10 gate build. Look at how many gateways he has inside his main base. This is absolutely insane. Definitely a, a unique build here from the, the Liquid team and Artosis I think is really the one letting his ally down this game. I mean those Corruptors are just sitting there. They can't do anything. They're just kind of chilling out. They're looking cool. But other than that, Mutalists are not what you need against Mass Stalker and the amount of sentries. Now, they may be able to hold off here for a couple seconds, but once the reinforcements come, I think it's going to be lights out. Yep, and there comes the reinforcements from the little one, getting a lot of Stalkers into the main base here. And I think this might be GG for both Artosis and QXC. If they do GG out of this game, it is going to be 0-2 which makes it much more difficult to win this series. The Greater Spire getting taken down while it was in the morphing animation, and these Stalkers are just wreaking havoc inside this base. They've killed off all the production facilities for QXC. He's not going to be able to warp in any more units. I think the only reason why they're in the game is because they're just in shock and awe at what is transpiring before their eyes. Oh, right. Yeah, this was pretty straightforward. I mean, you, he fed his ally, he fed uh, TLO all of his resources, he made a bunch of units, and they won. And so I think that's all there's going to be to say about this game. Artosis got to be scratching his head. He's not going to be pleased with the fact he just let QXC down, because QXC was playing pretty standard here. And I just, I mean, there's really no way for them to come back from this at all. So at this point, we're just waiting for the GG. I mean, look at this. Genro and TLO are also both mass expanding, so they're not going to be running out of money anytime soon. So I think that is that. GG calls QXC, and with that, both of the players do leave the game. And we are looking at a 0-2 currently if you are a QXC Artosis fan. But if you are the little one fan, it is 2-0. One more game does give the victory to Team Liquid. And so we are going to move on to Game 3. And the map chosen was Lost Temple. Once again, make sure to check out our sponsor, which is Tagalicious. Go check out the link down below. 
I want to say really quick, after this game, I talked to the sponsor who was actually spectating these games, and he said that Artosis actually thought that they saw Colossus, and that's why he's getting the Corruptors, which of course the Corruptors ended up being worthless because there was no Colossus. So that is that. Let's go on to the next game.